Are you ready? We have another illustration. We're gonna do another hairstyle, and trust me when I say, you don't wanna follow these directions. Painful, and they do not work. I don't know what it is about vintage illustrations, but I love them, probably because they're completely fictitious. They are not real. This is like a unicorn right now. My whole life has been building to this moment. So anyway, I tried to figure out how to become a unicorn, and uh, I think this video is going to be a lot easier for you than following any of these directions. So similarities of this piece versus my hair are going to be this victory roll with this nice indent right here, this victory roll with this nice indent that recedes into this other stuff, which, you know, that's what hers does too. I took liberties into my own hands as I felt like this was a very, very unicorn-like curl down the back mullet experiment and I did something a little bit more classy. All right, let's get started. The first thing I want you to do is brush through your hair and create a dramatic part line. I usually use a bobby pin. Pick whatever side works best for your face. Now you're gonna wanna warm up your curling iron for this. We're gonna kind of create the first indent, but don't worry, we're gonna be coming back to this. So. Um, you don't have to get it too distinct yet. Using a little hairspray will help form that. Next, kind of pin your hair out of the way. Mine was getting in the way real fast. And we're gonna separate a section on the front and start back combing just a little bit to give it a little bit of volume. Now don't get frustrated, this part took me a bunch of tries I just want you to keep in mind that it does not have to be perfect. What I found was that most of the time it wasn't perfect and I had to just mold it. I did that a few different ways. You can see I'm tightening the back by holding the front and twisting and twisting. I don't exactly know how to describe it. You're kind of just taking a pinch and just kind of working it in so that it tightens that back area because that was the thing I was having the hardest time with. And then you're just gonna kind of mold that curl and place it where you want. Now before you get too attached, it's a good time to see if you can recreate that indent. So kind of see if you can push your new victory roll around your um, curl. Sometimes I use my lightsaber instead of a curling iron. It, it's really confusing. All right, so go ahead and pinch that front curl and start pinning that in place. You're going to use some mousse. Now I do find that different inexpensive mousse Thingy majiggers for your hair don't actually work very well. So this is a good one, it's Nexus, and it's a light hold, but it does a really good job of kind of not making your hair too crispy, but really holding on to that styling. So once you're feeling pretty comfortable with where you put the mousse, go ahead and use your curling iron and just press that indent in one last time. So now you're just gonna section off that middle area of your hair, and we're not gonna use this yet, so you're just gonna pin it towards the back. This next section you're going to be rolling. So we wanna get a little tease in there, brush your hair backwards, tease that stuff. I never do too much, but sometimes it's nice to grab little layers and Obviously, you can see I'm not teasing it a ton. It just looks ridiculous when I tease, but that's fine. Brush out the top a little bit, and let's start that roll. Now, if you've seen my hair tutorial for beginners, you'll already know this technique to doing a pin curl. Um, pretty much, you're just gonna pinch and roll up your fingers, and you can go ahead and check out that video tutorial if you want to know the exact technique, because I will walk you through it, and it's great for all vintage hairstyles. 
So keep in mind that this looks really messy. You can tell it doesn't look that great or that perfect, but it still works because your hair is super moldable. So go ahead and pin it anyway, and we're gonna try to mold that hair. We're gonna bring up that bang, and I don't have any product in my hair currently, and yet my hair still is letting me mold it. A little risky taking out that pin, but I was able to make it work. Bringing that hair forward and really just working it because you can go and mess with it and try to do it over and over again, but you can also just move it around, sculpt it. One pin, I'm surprised that actually held. We're bold, my goodness. All right, here's some mousse. One pin and I'm actually doing that. I'm surprised it didn't fall out. Well, I feel like this is like a grease lightning moment. All right, we don't have all day. Just put a bunch of mousse all over that. All right, so now is the time to put pins in. I'm putting pins in the middle. I'm putting pins in the literally the middle. I mean, all over. I'm taking out my placement pin and I'm putting in actual bobby pins. So this is kind of a weird spot. We're gonna be doing a bunch of pin curls just to kind of get them out of the way. This is gonna be covered up, so I'm making it messy. I'm not taking a lot of time to do them because we don't need them to look good. We just need them to be kind of a a bulking element. I do suggest that the one by your face that you kind of try to do that um, pullback method because we are going to be placing a hair rat between it to give it more bulk. If you don't have a hair rat, that's fine. I have tons. Um, but just try to give that as much bulk as you can to um, kind of complement the other side. We don't want it to be as powerful, but you know, close. So now we're going to release that top layer of hair. And we're going to try to create that first indent. Fun. So this is where we're going to use the curling iron. I don't know why I didn't put mousse in my hair, but that would help if you put a little bit of mousse in. I'm just going to hold it there for a few seconds and try to get that ridge in there. And then you're going to use some pins and actually try to hold it in place for now so that it can, you know, stay in place while you're doing your next element. Go ahead and mold a little bit. If you have hairspray, use hairspray. I was out at the time that I was making this video. This is me trying to figure out what the heck I'm gonna do next. Uh -huh. Here's the mousse. You're gonna need it. So now you're gonna be making kind of like a fake finger wave and you're just going to do that by using your curling iron and putting it underneath. Sorry, I'm blurry for a second. And then you're going to switch it around for the other side. And clamp it down. And this should create a finger wave like look without having to do a finger wave set. The other way to just have that last little indent, and we're almost done. So maybe I had a little hairspray left. I was keeping it for those really important moments. Let that sit for a moment so that that is a really nice hold. You wanna make sure it's nice and cool before you take out your extra pin. Now this is the time that we're gonna go back into molding your hair. I know we talk about it all the time, but really your hair should be kind of like Play-Doh and it's time to just mold and fluff and, you know, add a bunch of hair rats. So because I have hair rats, I'm going to be adding some in here in order to try to give it a little bit more um, structure. So this is a unique time in which your hair is going to do what your hair is going to do. So embrace it. I added an extra bobby pin just to kind of get that ridge back in there because it wasn't staying. And that's something I am going to take out, but it was just kind of more of a placeholder while I was still molding. And now this back piece, I had this sticking up for the longest time and I'm finally flattening it. And now I'm just doing some final touches, adding a few more hair rats and voila. All right, so I am going to be using my fingers, kind of finishing touches. Um, and hairspray, lots of hairspray. Now we just have one more step to finish the front look and that is the back of this 
finger wave, this fake finger wave, and we're just going to do a pin curl and try to hide that bump up top before moving on to the back. And of course, you could keep your hair down, you could do loose curls and just have this updo, but if you want it out of your way, then we can do the back with a bunch of pin curls. Now I'm taking out the remaining bobby pins that were holding my um, finger wave in place, and it looks like it stayed really well, so one of the things about kind of setting something in there for a while, it really helps hold it into place. Now I like to try to make like a really solid clean crown line, so I take bobby pins and I kind of just pin them straight across and I use this as a guideline for when I'm doing my pin curls. So check it out with your hand, make sure it's smooth, a couple pieces will probably come apart which you can just pin in later. And we're just going to use the same technique I use in my beginner vintage hair tutorial and it's really easy to do pin curls this way. So the ones that matter the most are going to be the ones on either side of your face. You're just going to pin those in place and the whole look of this is overlap so even though that one was kind of loose this next one kind of fits inside of it making it look very rose-like. And then this next one I don't like that line of hair coming down so I kind of put that over that next element and it all just kind of works out. So here's on the other side. This side we're going to kind of build up near the ear in order to bridge that gap since that side piece is so large, which is actually not as large as it was in the illustration. The illustration had it the size of a football. So go ahead and just pin those into place and we'll do the rest of the head like that. So I will show you on this side one, I'm going to be doing one a little bit more facing, kind of like the curl is going to be a little bit more towards the viewer, if that makes sense. And then I do one more on top of this to again add that bulk around my face. So I'm kind of almost placing it on top of those other ones in order to get a directional piece. And there you go. Now you're just going to finish the rest of the back. So just remember when you're doing this, you're overlapping and you're just doing a ton of bobby pins over pin curls. Simple as that. All right, you guys, thank you so much for doing this video with me. The hairstyle from today was actually from this 1940s book that you can find on Amazon. I happened to find it and I don't believe that the directions are very useful, but there are some fun hairstyles and I'm going to be going over more of these in future posts. So if you'd like more 1940s styles from this book or from other illustrations, I find illustrations are super interesting, so I like recreating them. See you next time.